Hi and welcome to the Ruby Tuesday. Today I'm reviewing season two of Netflix's original series, Glow. One, two, three. Glow! Yeah! Is that a film? Glow was not something that I had on my radar of things to watch, but a friend of mine over at Stupid Clock, you should check them out on YouTube, said that it was really worth my time. Also, Netflix gave us the second season to review, but I actually hadn't seen a single episode of Glow until a few days ago. Now I've seen all 20. Exciting stuff. One of the main things that stuck with me uh, when I watched Glow was just how much each episode and each series managed to pack into it. I mean, each episode is about 30 minutes long and then each season is 10, 10 episodes. But what they managed to pack into each season, I thought was just crazy. Woo! Hubba hubba. Quick spoiler warning, I think it goes without saying that if you are watching this review and haven't seen season one, then you should probably stop watching this review now, as I will spoil a couple of the story moments from season one. Unless you're not that bothered, then just watch the review anyway, and you're welcome. So Glow, in case you missed it like me the first time, is inspired by a short-lived uh, but very beloved show from the 80s called Glow. Funny that. It's about a bunch of women uh, actresses from all walks of life who auditioned for a women's wrestling TV series that is to be filmed live. They're looking for unconventional women. Whatever the hell that means. The first series sees these women uh, trying to become wrestlers or at least act like uh, wrestlers in an effort to get the show off the ground. I'm a real actress. The major arc of the show centers around two female protagonists, Ruth and Debbie, who are best friends at the beginning. And then Ruth sleeps with Debbie's husband, chaos ensues, and then the writers went, I know, now let's continue to force Debbie and Ruth to be on screen together by making them work together as co-stars uh, on the GLOW team. Are you insane? Why is she here? So yada yada yada, lots of stuff happens, uh, which brings me to season two. We got a show to do! What is this? Come on, let's go! Uh, which brings me to season two of the gorgeous ladies of wrestling that's what glow stands for this season uh, the ladies are learning to become real wrestlers and trying to learn the moves to prove that they are not just fakers and of course chaos ensues with all the character arcs and story behind the scenes but going back to what i was talking about earlier how much they managed to pack into it um the show glow is an 18 and for good reason I mean, yes, there is sex and there is profanity, but I don't think that's why it's an 18. Ah, fuck no. It's probably that's isn't definitely part of it, but the themes that the that the but the themes that the dry drama comedy tackles can be intense. It's drugs, infidelity, children, parenting, fatherhood, life choices, depression, death. Glow tackles it all. It's complicated. Amazingly, those themes uh, never seem to interfere with the body of the story. It's still always about the woman trying to get the show, Glow, off the ground. And it's about the struggles they face on just how to do that. I think it was a couple of episodes into season two when my brain went bing and went, I know why I like the show. But my ping moment uh, that my brain was reminding me of was a, of a show called Studio 60 on the Sunset Strip, created by the genius that is Adam Sorkin. It aired in 2006 and only ever received one season and I'll never know why. I think it compares really well, which is why my brain reminded me of it. It's witty, fantastically scripted, and it's about a behind the scenes look at a fictional sketch comedy television show. Glow has a very similar format. You get to see the creation of the show and then watch it live with the, the characters and what they've done. There's something fantastic about that. As a viewer, you go on that journey with the characters and then you see them achieve something great when it's put together. It's a format that makes you invested in a fictional show and that's be before the script. I got chills. <sighs> yeah, you would. So I think this is why, part of why my brain reminded me of Studio 60 because of Adam Sorkin's script or how great the script was. So Glow is clever, witty, smart and funny all at the same time and it seems to manage to balance that stuff while still pointing at the main story. I'm excited! Aren't you excited? One of the lines I absolutely loved, and it's taken out of context, but I'll, I'll, it won't do it justice, but I'll say it anyway. Welfare queen! <laughs> What'd you call my mom? That's like doing algebra in space. Wait. You're my favorite. Uh, I mean, that's just the taste of the scripting and dialogues. Very clever, it's very fun, and works really well within each episode. 
Glow is set in the 80s, well, 1985 to be exact. It's set to a fantastic 80s soundtrack and the soundtrack often drives the show. It has the neon and spandex to complement the colorful score. We are the gorgeous ladies of wrestling! It's a show that has something to say. Most of the time, it does a good job to hide the commentary in the story. One of the worst things you can do um, as a director or producer of a TV show, if you have a, a message to say, is shove it into your audience's faces. And I think for the most part, they manage to avoid that. It, it only happens a little time when I go, oh, that's kind of shoving in my face. But just slightly, most of the time, the story, um, the message is in the story. I remember one line particularly where a female character has to decide against doing something. That is how this business works. She's having to make that decision. Um, it affects the other, some other's future. And after a shouting match, there's this line, Feminin feminism has principles, but life has compromises. So you just let them do whatever they want? And I think that line hit me hard. I grew up in South Africa and I've seen a few things that have irked me a lot. Let's just say I, I really hate injustice. So in a show where women have to fight for the right to leave the kitchen, where they have to fight to even be allowed to speak in conversation because the men are speaking, well, I was I was emotionally engaged and I was rooting for all of all of the wrestling characters. The eighties, although great uh, for film and music, was still a place where women leading in the workplace was not a big on the agenda for men. So here you have a show about wrestling, a sport which predominantly has been for men, and the women actresses, wrestlers have to fight all stereotypes, sexism, racism, all the bad isms of the time. Just listen to some of the names of the wrestlers' personas. There was uh, Liberty Bell, who's blonde and blue eyed, blue eyed, and she's the stay at home mum who's the hero. Then there's Alison Brie, um, who acts as Ruth. Her character's name is Zoya the Destroyer, and she's the Russian baddie. You get the picture. They have to face off against cultural stereotypes and racism. I'm not the only offensive character. Everyone's offensive. Which I think this just leads the viewer to be more invested in the characters. It's a very clever mechanic. There's a moment in season one where they are watching a live stream wrestling match uh, unfold um, with the drama. And one of the female actresses has a light bulb moment. She sounds, I get it. It's a soap. It's a soap. She finally understood what it was all about. And in that moment when she was doing that, I got it as well. Glow is a modern day soap with social commentary hidden carefully in the story arc. It has great scripting, fantastic ac acting. Everything is well executed from the filming to the score. It flows really well. But I couldn't get past the line, it's a soap, it's a soap. It is a soap and I loved it. As soaps probably need a few hundred episodes and the production value needs to go down to reach the heights of a soap. At the end of the day, that is what it feels like. It, it's like a high-end soap that's well scripted about female uh, wrestlers and actors trying to live in a man's world. It's brilliant, funny and charming and has a lot to say. And you should watch it. I loved everything about this show. It's got so much going on. It's talking about so much. Uh, the characters are so well defined um, that by the end of it, you are really kind of wanting season three. I never expected to be so invested in a female wrestling TV show. Um, a lot of fun. Thanks for watching and we've got more reviews coming out soon. As always, we do love chatting to you in the comments below. So I hope to talk to you guys soon. Bye.